Hello, hello there and welcome back to my channel and before we begin with today's awesome gameplay I wanted to share the results of the poll that I did yesterday with you. As of the time of recording nearly 4000 people participated and that is more than some of my videos got lately and I just asked why that is and nearly 60% claimed that they did not see any of my videos in their normal YouTube feed. That is substantial. That is a huge portion as you can imagine and a big problem. So what can we do to change this? Because I recently have discovered, believe it or not, the fun side of War Thunder and I wanted to share this with you. This is what a lot of people have criticized, kind of, rightfully so, that you know I should concentrate on the fun things about War Thunder. So I play stuff that is hilarious and fun, as the gameplay quickly will show you, and there are a few things. It seems like this is a problem with the YouTube algorithm, the way that the statistics turns out. And you can actually do something that requires not a lot of work from you. There are a lot of people that have not subscribed, so please subscribe if you want to watch more of my videos. And also hit the like button for you. It's just a simple click and not just a catchphrase. It really helps out the channel greatly. Further, hit the bell. That is another interaction with the channel, which shows that you have interest in the content. And also always comment what you like. I only can collect the opinion and you know what people like from if they share their thoughts with me in the comment section. Also, there is a further method. Join my Discord, because then you get notified over Discord bypassing any sort of YouTube algorithm problems. And then you can enjoy my content if you choose to do so. And without further ado, let's now get into the gameplay. I hope you enjoy. Hello, hello there and welcome back to War Thunder. If you have skipped the intro, this is it. The most fun I've had in War Thunder for a very long time. And I really feel like a massive idiot not having played this thing more in the past. Because it, it, it's, it's absolutely addictive to play this thing. This is what I really like. A very effective derp assault gun with the combination of really filthy firepower and also strong front armor. This is what I want from this sort of tank. It, it really goes for it. Absolutely amazing. And the gameplay is just really great. But I also want to give a shout out to my team in this battle because they played it really, really well. And it was just the match. Almost perfect. So... What we're talking about is a German tank destroyer, the 4.3 Premium Brombeer. And it is based on the chassis of a Panzer IV, but has more armor on the front than a Tiger when it comes to the upper casement. And then there is the gun. Oh my god. The 150mm Sturmhaubitze 43L-12. 38 rounds of total ammunition capacity two shell types and that is all that you need. So now let's have a look at the minimap. It, it's lighting up like a Christmas tree because enemy tanks get scouted. There are my team members fighting directly over the objective. There are tanks behind that one in the cap supporting him. There are tanks going wide on the flanks going more or less to the fields of Normandy. Uh, there are tanks behind me on the left and on the right. We have established a proper front line and I'm not storming forwards because I just want to play here with my team and low tier is really fun tier. So this tank combine, combines a really massive derp gun and also a good frontal protection. I get shot, the shell bounces and now let's connect that HE shell with a tank. Oh, that, that's not gonna polish out quickly. This HE shell is heavy cruiser grade firepower and i'm not making this up this is fantastic the jgr 38 high explosive round has a muscle velocity of only 240 meters per second but 8.6 kilograms of 
literally TNT filling, producing 61 millimeters of penetration, regardless of the distance, regardless of the angle that you fire it. And it just, it just kills. But it's not just, yeah, you got the kill message. Oh no, this is just complete pulverization. This is complete obliteration. And it just, you know, saw this little ASG-57 uh, just in time. He bounces and... <laughs> it's... I'm lacking the words here. And I actually have fun. I, I just can't play. I just can't stop playing this thing. And I just can't get enough of this massive massive derp gun i love it let's go over the stats a bit because that's why you are here after all by the way i saw this cromwell and i know exactly where he wants to go so reload reload is hefty 17.2 seconds and that's for a fully trained best qualified ace crew then we have 15 degrees per second of gun traverse to the left and to the right and you know limited firing angles oh when the enemy is looking the wrong direction, overpressure gets the pressure on them, through them, on them. And it just catapults the civil lines and RP into my pocket. Then 4 degrees per second of gun elevation, 8 degrees of gun depression and 30 degrees of gun elevation. Which sometimes you need because that mass velocity is not good. The mobility... 27.8 ton tank powered by a 300 horsepower engine horsepower to ton ratio 10.8 not really extremely bad but not great either 3.6 run by the way 40 kilometers per hour forwards top speed and in reverse 7 kilometers per hour and i have no idea how i survived that shot but i'll take it and that asc 57 then got roasted from the rear. Beautiful. By the way, there is also a second shell tab, a heat shell with 280 meters per second mass velocity and 185 millimeters of penetration. But if you use the shell correctly, there is hardly any target that you need to use that on. Maybe an ISU 152, but you know very situational anyway this thing by the way um, as I said and demonstrated uh, a few times here already this thing has front lower this thing um, the hull is the lower hull is not that strong only 50 millimeters um, it's a Panzer 4 hull then there's also the driver's hatch the step armor you know between the casemate and the lower glazes is very thin and very uh, susceptible to Soviet APHEBC rounds. But other than this, the, the upper glacis is 100 millimeters of rolled homogeneous armor at an angle of 38 degrees. And that is, depending on how you look at it, 125 millimeters of effective armor. The gun mantlet is also quite bouncy and derpy. Um, there is also an overlay ring with an additional 50 millimeters. So this is really surprising a lot. I could cover some of this up also with uh, with bushes, but um, I try to play my tanks clean. Oh, just blapping KV-1s like that is fantastic. And there is the next customer, AT-34, and he doesn't see me. But okay, um, somebody else got that customer first. But here I hear a tank around the corner and I'm... I just need just a glimpse at the hull. Come on. He bounces. I don't. And <laughs> Six kills already. Just like that. Now, my team has kind of uh, evaporated, but so has the enemy team. I need to go into A, but I hesitate a bit. I don't want to get shot in the back. The side is uh, only 60 millimeters, um, and on the hull, it's only 20 millimeters behind the side skirts, but... The front man, the front. <laughs> so 
splashing enemies on the turret and then the shrapnels perforating the deck armor and then the shockwave goes through creating the actual overpressure mechanic that kills the crew so efficiently this is merciless this is absolutely brutal and highly efficient and to be honest for this caliber with that amount of tnt that is kind of what the shell should do right um if you're inside a tank and it gets hit by such a massive he shell there is just nothing too much left of the crew right so in that aspect i wouldn't really call it too overpowered since the tank also has such a long reload such a uh, slow mass velocity by the way there's still somebody in the cap and uh, again one of my teammates goes for it bombs are coming in i just waited them out and yeah that little guy is really going for it let me help you <laughs> and we're capping together so this guy was helpful in uh, kind of distracting the heavy one but he probably would have not survived that onslaught and now i want to go up here and i want to just um intercept the people that probably want to uh, interrupt our capping process but at the moment i don't see anything again that team plays very well we have the most minimal front line if you look at the minimap um and there comes oh oh <laughs> I just, I just love this. I can't get enough of this. And again, it's quite easy to kill from the front, this tank, if you know where to shoot. Now, a lot of people then just simply panic if they see this, you know, quote unquote, drifting around the corner. Um, there's the driver's edge. There is, as I said, the um, lower step armor. And then there is also the lower glacis uh, with only 50 millimeters. But, but most people just are so indoctrinated to shoot uh, the upper part of a tank rather than you know the lower uh, places that uh, this tank is, is just fantastic for a, for a close quarters brawling map and to be honest the majority of maps are close range engagements so you don't even have to really train shooting above 400 meters although here here i try to train it a little bit and this is where we come to a little bit of a slower paced episode of this gameplay as i'm just i'm just waiting i still have enough ammunition i want to position myself in such a way that i can react to both flanking maneuvers and people coming from the front a rangefind here the stone and and this is a bit of a problem because the rangefinder has obviously not a very smooth reading so it reads 280 meters distance to that stone but a um, target would appear very often behind it so you have to range further and you can see this in the in the crosshair if you're off by 10 meters the shell goes quite a bit of distance so here i just wait and wait and wait and what wait for really big enemy uh, targets there is something in cover but I need to protect the objective. I have killed enough already. Now I want to survive. And there is artillery strike coming in. And this is now the where it where I'm where I have some itchy feeling in the finger, where I really want to pull that trigger. Because this thing is addictive, this this boom and the enemy just being obliterated. There it is. I remembered uh, the distance, but that Sherman was way too close for comfort, at least for his. And that was the 105. And yeah, they also saw quite a race in popularity. Another shell bounces, and this is something that, uh, especially at you know longer combat distances of quote unquote 300 meters, happens quite regularly. As people are not really used to this. Oh, this is the double ace. <laughs> well, that was actually the Sherman. This is kill number 11. So, absolutely fantastic. And we're protecting, we're holding the cap. Because caps win games. There it is. 
and well we hit that stone that previously or that rock formation that we previously range find it because that uh, enemy tank uh, was a bit further behind so it, it's it's really tough and again we have to go through this long reload can we hit this guy can we hit depth to the range he's coming closer that was a bit too far and again we bounce the return shell which is really important artillery strike behind me i'm a bit off under pressure here now i would really prefer if uh, the front line would uh, come a bit closer to the objective we have almost won and now i've reloaded come on can we lob that shell yes we can it's beautiful it's so brutal yet so beautiful I don't know this thing this thing is it so we capped we have 12 kills and well there is another potential target but the match is about to end can we get another kill come on let's charge him no there is the end of the game and me whiffing the shot doesn't matter and that was an amazing match when he actually played, when there is all the action going on, it's fantastic. And we nearly made 160,000 silver lines without a booster. And with 20,000 silver lines coming from all the awards, including Heavy Metal Hero and Survivor. This thing makes an awesome amount of silver lines because it has the joint highest silver line modifier. This earns as much as you know your top premium tanks this earns as much as the american xm1 even more so and it also earns well the same amount as the leopard a1 a1 l44 it earns even more again than the t55 am1 well the same amount and the t72 av you know it, it earns um, as much or even more than the top premiums and for me personally, it's significantly more fun. It's fantastic. And I just can't stop playing this thing. I just can't really... Uh, I, I just have way too much fun. This is really addictive. And I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And that's it for me today. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, don't forget to subscribe, to like the video, to hit the bell to join my discord so you get notified of all the videos and as usual we'll see each other on the ways in the skies and on the battlefields of war thunder